Alrighty, so whenever I meet you guys at the park or in the public, my most common question asked is, what do I think is happening to Canada's Wonderland? So what better way than to discuss the next five to 10 years um, in what I think is an expansion plan going on at Canada's Wonderland based off of what I'm hearing on stockholders calls and presentations. I have some of those things listed in here for you guys to read and see for yourself. And then I'm going to just discuss what I honestly think the future could hold at Canada's Wonderland. Some of this may be far-fetched, but a lot of it, if you look at other parks, even smaller parks like CGA, isn't as far-fetched as it may seem at first. So as we all know, Yukon Striker is coming to Canada's Wonderland in 2019, and it is coming with Frontier Canada. Along with Frontier Canada is coming a renovation of Vortex. I'm using the word renovation because we don't quite know what it could entail yet. I'm expecting some sort of station reno, new paint job, and they already redid the trains. This is going to fit in with a storyline that's coming with Yukon Striker and Frontier Canada, and it's going to make the area look a lot more complete. You're now going to walk into Soaring Timbers, Flying Canoes, <laughs> Lumberjack, and whatever Vortex ends up being called. Let's call it Polar Vortex for now, even though that's not going to be the name. It's going to be something mining, but... You're going to walk into a whole new area and then it's going to lead you on over to Yukon Striker with what I'm assuming is shops, buildings, and uh, Yukon Striker. Um, on top of that, you have things on these presentations on Cedar Fair's website suggesting that parks are going to be seeing things like hotels, cabins, and other smaller things like ongoing evaluation of fixed cost base to remove inefficient capacity to further support historically higher margins. This is referring to... Um, upgrading attractions that are have high costs. So this is this could be referring to Rocky Mountain construction. It could be referring to removing rides like Witch's Wheel. So it's all about what you guys think doesn't belong at Canada's Wonderland and has a low capacity or inefficient capacity, thus meaning it's not popular anymore and it's going to be removed for other attractions down the road. Now that list could be a large one as Canada's Wonderland has a very large supporting lineup. It doesn't have those massive coasters like other parts. We are getting there, but it has a very supporting lineup. So you could pick any coaster that isn't popular in the coaster enthusiast community. So that's up to you to predict what coasters could be removed. I'll save that for a later video. Now we get more into in more in depth and you have this statement from um, the branded hotel, Hyatt Hotel, will continue Cedar Fair's signif significant investment in Canada's Wonderland, one of the portfolio's largest and most successful parks. We expect strong attendance growth there, driven by the introduction of the new record-breaking roller coaster, Yukon Striker, and in addition, the immersive holiday event, Winterfest. So based off of this paragraph right there, you're looking at interesting words like ongoing ex like investments, one of the most successful parks... So I'm definitely predicting a lot is coming. You look at a smaller park like CGA that promised rapid growth and massive growth, and they're now saying Canada's Wonderland is one of those parks. We haven't seen them list Canada's Wonderland as a, an expansion park or a park that's going to see a lot of investments until actually that one post on Cedar Fair's website. I can tell you that Canada's Wonderland, by the looks of things, was one of the strongest performers in Cedar Fair's chain in August. Um, we were seeing a filled parking lot park capacity almost every day in August, while other parks were dealing with weather problems, etc. So I'm definitely predicting that Canada's Wonderland is going to see a lot of investments, and it looks like we're seeing that on the wording that Cedar Fair is using on their presentations online. I'm definitely really excited for the stockholders call in September or October, as I'll be able to get a better idea of what's going on. Now, the color codes on here are very confusing, and you're probably going, what are you doing, Brendan? Well, let's get right to it. The orange is 2019. It is Frontier Canada, and that's referring to the expansion of a whole new area. Now, this is part of their immersive new areas and lands inside their parks to make the parks look better. So Frontier Canada is definitely part of that upgrade that Cedar Fair talks about constantly on their presentations for stockholders. So orange is Yukon Striker and Frontier Canada. That is the upgrade to the immersive new areas. Um, the blue, this is a little out there, but I honestly really do see this. An out and back wing coaster along the highway stretching in around their service road. It would look really nice. It would essentially be free marketing at all times during operation along the highway. And uh, that's essentially what Wonderland does best. It's next and closed by all these massive popular roads that are high traffic. So having those big attractions in view is really good for the park. So some sort of 
out and back coaster that stands out in that area in the blue there, the light blue, I'm predicting wing coaster would be phenomenal. Now you're looking at all these brown areas. The brown areas could be suggesting a wood coaster renovation or a brand new GCI. So I circled Mindbuster and Wild Beast, and that could be referring to an RMC on one of those two coasters. You all know my personal opinion. I think Mindbuster is definitely the better pick for this, and that might complete the whole Frontier Canada area. We know Mindbuster was supposed to be the star attraction way back in the day, but that didn't end up happening with Frontier Canada. Now that it's happening, who knows? I think Mindbuster is definitely the more popular choice. Now let's say they don't go with that and they go with a brand new GCI sometime down the road in the next five to 10 years. I think Whitewater Canyons Forest is the perfect area to house it. We are hearing that Action Theater has no plans in the near future. So I'm predicting that's probably gonna go at some point. And that whole area can house a station or two for two roller coasters if you're to incorporate the wing coaster and the GCI. Now the green, this is where it gets interesting. The green could be part of this whole entertainment district. Canada's Wonderland is launching Winterfest in 2019. An almost year round, I, I, I'm exaggerating it a bit. So I, 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 an attraction that's gonna get, keep the park open till about January. Now what this park could really benefit on is having an entertainment district where it has, you know, restaurants, maybe some clubs. You have that second entrance near Kingswood and then you also have the entrance to the main gate. Um, you can have some restaurants that actually pay to be in there, almost kind of like uh, what CGA was planning to get. So have your restaurants, have your entertainment district right there and upgrade your parking lot in the red. So the red definitely stands for parking garages or underground parking or both. Um, and you have your entrance uh, tolls that I've marked there with the road. So just upgrading your parking to up to hold it in the parking garage over there. So you have your entertainment district and then you have those renovations or expansions inside the park. I definitely want to hear from you guys. I know this is a little out there, but I'm taking essentially what CGA was going to get and incorporating it into one of Cedar Fair's most successful parks, as it would make sense, as we are so close to Toronto, one of the world's biggest cities. So why not have the entertainment district over here and have it open year round, even though the park isn't open year round? It's a great idea. Hope you guys like it. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to watch. Again, I hope you guys really like this video. Uh, this is definitely what I'm thinking in the next five to 10 years. Comment down below what you think or what you think the next five to 10 years could hold for Canada's Wonderland. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye.